Good afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Government and Legislative Committee for Thursday, February the 11th, 2021. In accordance with the mandated direction of the State Superintendent, Baltimore County Public Schools and offices are closed to the public and non-essential personnel in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In accordance with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety without the physical presence of board members, subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are open pursuant to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, today's government and legislative committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website or on BCPS TV, Comcast, Xfinity Channel 73, Verizon Fios Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Rosenberg, please call the roll to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Pastor. Yes. Ms. Hen. Yes. Mr. Mahamza. Yes. Thank you very much. Will you now call the names of staff members participating in today's meeting? Mr. Baysmore. Present. Mr. Corns. Present. All Thank you. Please call and note the names of all staff members participating on the call that you have not named. All right, thank you very much. <laughs> then we are going to move forward. Thank you, uh, committee. Please remember to stay muted when you're not speaking and also identify yourself when speaking and making motions or being second to a motion. Thank you. I want to welcome all of you this afternoon. We have a lot to do. There's a lot going on uh, in virtual Annapolis and Mr. Baysmore is going to fill us in on all of the things that are going on. So with that being said, I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Baysmore. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, Cheryl Pastor, um, board members Joshua Mahamza and um, Vice Chair of the School Board, uh, Julie Hen. Um, it's an honor and a pleasure to come before you to give you an update on the uh, legislative session this year. Uh, I wanted to start off with Kerwin um, to give an update on where that, that bill is at the moment. Um, as we know, last year, uh, the Kerwin legislation passed and um, the governor vetoed uh, and this year in the state in the state legislature earlier this week the house of delegates uh, were wrong. So, so now the bill has to go be taken up and which it will be tomorrow Friday uh, the Senate is convening and they'll take the, um, this bill up and we'll see if that if they override the bill. And essentially, if the Senate overrides as the House did, 
then um, the Carolyn bill would be implemented. And one of the um, uh, things that we are focused on in Baltimore County is the Built to Learn um, Act, which uh, our con you know construction funding for schools is 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 in that bill. Well, well, that bill was coupled to Kerwin, and so if Kerwin passes, then the Built to Learn Act actually passes, and we'll um, start to get that additional funding that we need um, to start renovating, building new schools, and uh, renovating others. So tomorrow, I will be I will. Um, make sure I let this committee, the chair, know um, how that vote goes in the Senate uh, on that veto override. And so I'll pause there to see if there's any questions about the Kerwin and Built to Learn. Thank you, Mr. Baysmore. Uh, Ms. Han or Mr. Mahumza, either of you have any questions for Mr. Baysmore? Yes, this is Ms. Han. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, good afternoon, Mr. Baysmore. Good afternoon, uh, Vice Chair. And Thank you. Um, do you know what the stipulation is if um, this is overridden as far as built to learn when that funding would become available and what the timeline would be for us to receive um, funding for school construction? That that is the um, the one question because we're anticipating um, that the Senate will override from everything we've been hearing, you know, from the president of the Senate and 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 the other um, legislators that that it will be overridden. The next step in that is to is to find out the timeline for that capital funding, which basically um, will will um, contain a few steps that has to be done um, in order for us to see the funding. You know, it will receive the funding. We don't know the timeline right now on how that is going to play out because we have to um, um, uh, the funding is coming through the Maryland Stadium Stadium Authority and they have to um, issue issue bonds. There has to be a memorandum of understanding between the Maryland Stadium Authority and the local jurisdictions. Um, I think I think um, and hope that there'll be everyone will be ready to move rather quickly um, to implement all those steps. But having a, a, a real timeline, we don't know just yet. Um, I think once this is you know overridden, that within that 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 next week or two, I should be able to come back and give you a more um, you know definitive timeline because we're hoping that it's it's you know it doesn't take too long to put everything in place uh, once this is overridden and that money actually start you know coming into the uh, to the county. Sure, thank you um, for that. So the board is in the process of of looking at our upcoming budget and mm -hmm. how this may affect the capital portion of that. Um, so I'm, I'm interested in the timeline and what this may mean um, for our capital requests, our capital priorities, if any impact on on that whatsoever and what this this might mean for that. So I assume this would get things moving faster. It can only be a good thing, right? So mm -hmm. any information you can share this is certainly one of our priorities, as you know. So, Ms. Hen, um, I'm, I apologize for interrupting you, but I am trying to take some notes on the things of interest to committee members. Would you just mind restating that piece about which you are concerned that leads you to asking these questions so I can just note that, please? Sure. I am interested in the timing of the availability of capital funding okay. once okay. Um, right. the veto is overridden. For That's Bill simple Tolan. enough. That I think we we all agree with that. Thank you very much, um, Ann, for for your comments and for restating. Mr. Mahumza, do you have any questions for Mr. Baysmore? Not on this topic. Thank you. All right, Mr. Baysmore, anything else you you want to share with us about Kerwin? Or built to uh, learn? Know that I uh, just noted uh, um, Vice Chair Hen's uh, uh, question, and that is the, the 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 question that we all need answered. So as soon as I get information, I will make sure I will get that um, directly to to you, Madam Chair, and uh, to to Vice Chair Hen. Thank you, thank you, uh, Mr. Baysmore. 
All right, we're now going to go to um, May Maryland Association of Boards of Education update. I'll just share with you some of the things about which we spoke at our last meeting, which was uh, February the 1st. Please, Mr. Baysmore, um, jump in as you will and need to. Uh, we went over the, the, a few of the state bills that pertain to um, education, and I'll just highlight the ones that were pretty much highlighted there. Um, House Bill 724, and this one is an interesting one. This is about um, a prolonged school closing, but in reference to um, students who receive special education services, uh, having them or when they will make up time. And as the bill is written, it look like it looks like some of that will be post graduation. Um, Mabe opposed that. So that is um, what I have noted. Um, and that's where they stand on that. Do you have anything else on that, Mr. Baysmore 724 House bill? No, ma'am. All right, House Bill 222, um, and that is about our SROs. Um, the, again, these are state bills. Remember that MABE only handles state bills, not local ones. Um, SROs not engaging in school disruption, um, making sure that everyone knows that they are not a part of, of the uh, administrative team when it comes to discipline in a school, that uh, a, a school administrator might call them in to offer support, but beyond that, uh, their services are not to handle discipline. So that's 522. Any questions about that? MABE does support that bill. All right, House Bill 245. Um, this also pertains to SROs. That prohibits a school resource officer from entering a building unless summoned by the administrator or there is uh, an official emergency in place. That would mean that it would be called in and that person, um, that SRO would come in. And that would be situations of violence. Um, and again, they would come in in civilian clothing and no weapon being shown. And again, they have to be called in under emergency an emergency situation by the administration or an official emergency calling. No routine school descriptions. Any questions about that? Oh, let me just make this other point. Um, some of the funds from the capital used for SROs will go towards mental health support for students. Mr. Baysmore, anything you want to add that I might have left out? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Yeah. Uh, Miss Hand, Mr. Mahomza. Mr. Mahomza. Yeah. Um, I, I was trying to understand it. Is it saying police officers or SROs? They are still called SROs. They are designated, still designated in that role. However, they would not, as we see SROs in a building, um, continuously now, they would no longer, based on this bill, be in the school um, from start to finish as we know them now, but they are still in the program, they still get the training, mm -hmm. um, and they're still designated as that. Again, when they come into the building, they would be in civilian clothing, no weapons um, shown, but they would. it would be an emergency situation. Yeah. Uh, well, I guess what I'm trying to understand is um, there's a couple of SRO bills. Um, I think one of them was like completely removing the program, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Um, how do the, these bills overlap or like um, counteract each other? Um, if they're, if they're removing the 
the funding for that program, how is this bill even, how can we even consider the SRO program still there? I'm, I'm a bit confused. And, it's in training and all of the yeah. funds are not withdrawn. Um, okay. it, it, it may be reduced and you're correct. There's more than one. The first one that I mentioned was House Bill 522 um, and that would keep SROs, but they would not be engaged in any disciplinary action unless an administrator asks, requests their intervention. The other one, 245, takes them out of the building. They might be on the premise in some way, but they will be out of the building and they're in plain clothes and they come in at the request of the administrator. Now, because of that, because they are not in the building all day, there are funds and because they will be used in a different way, there are funds that go into the program currently as we have them that won't be in them and those funds would then be used, as I said, for um, uh, mental health uh, needs and personnel needs um, for our students. So you're right, right there, there are a couple of them. And then I, have, I have a question, Mr. sorry. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Bahamsa. Yeah. Um, I guess I was referencing Bill uh, 496, the counselors, not cops. So is, is, it, is that bill also saying it's not removing the whole program or did I read that wrong? Yeah, um, they are. I don't have one. We didn't cover one. Do you know of one where they are completely removed, Mr. Baysmore? Well, it's in the, in well, the agenda. Sorry. And, if I may speak yeah. to that, that one is. Yeah. OK, all. go ahead. The defunding, they, they would actually supplant. There's the funding for the program is uh, ten million dollars for the SROs, right? And, and as you know, in Baltimore County, we have a you know strong SRO program, right. And it requires requires funding. So what they're doing is saying, uh, which would essentially defund the SRO program, is take the ten million dollars and use it for counselors as opposed to the SRO program. So then, if you don't have funding for the SRO program, um, then um, um, you know you. you you don't have funding for it, so that it's hard to run a, a, a program. Number? What is that number? That's HB 496, and May did oppose this, this yes. bill okay. because it it, it would uh, kind of it would basically defund the um, SRO program. Okay. Yes, I haven't gotten to 496. Okay. All right. Yes, it it would that would defund it. Miss Han, you wanted to speak to it. Thank you. Um, 496 also repeals the Safe to Learn Act, which uh, was put in place following the 2012 Perry Hall High School shooting. Uh, it was legislation sponsored by Senator Klausmeyer, um, specifically in response to that incident at Perry Hall High School requiring SROs. So it does um, remove the requirement um, for safe, multiple measure, safety measures um, within schools within yes. the state. Yes, that's the cost. All right, and, well, and to funding. Then right. I don't need to get to 496. We've done. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mahamza, does that answer your question? Yeah, so basically, um, what I was asking is that if some of this bill still recognizes. Um, the need of SROs, but although like limited, but 496 would basically say there is no need. So I guess what I'm trying to understand from Mr. Baysmore is um, have these legislators communicated with one another? It, it kind of seems like some of their bills are counteracting with each other and there's a lot of bills. And I, I, I really want to understand is what is what are the legislature uh, legislators thinking in this? With this. Can I address that first, Mr. Uh, if you don't mind, Mr. Mahomes, because you did say Mr. Baysmore, but before Mr. Baysmore jumps in, unless yeah, you no, want that's to fine. That's fine. That's fine. You can answer. Okay. If you look at them, I see them um, as tiered. What they're doing is making sure that there is a reconfiguring of how SROs are used and processing um, how we can also uh, include, infuse um, more mental social health practitioners for our students. So 
they and as I'm looking at them, it, it looks like an overlap. One is gone. One is in the middle and the other one is the way it actually should have been in the first place because SRO should have never been used as um, another disciplinary branch just as run of the mill in a school. Yeah. So Mr. Baysmore, you want to if I if I mischaracterize that, please clarify. No, no, no you're, you're correct. Um, 5, 520 House Bill 522 is basically um, saying that the SROs are not in there to 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 discipline and uh, um, a lot of the com um, has been driven by by data that's been uh, shown just to, to, to say that when SROs are in, in buildings that there are a higher number of um, minority and black and brown kids that are, are, are arrested. So that has spawned a lot of interest in the SRO program. And um, um, what has happened is depending on what which jurisdiction you're in, um, there's, there's difference of opinion. And in Baltimore County, our delegation, um, we um, are very, you know, are very involved with our SRO program here in Baltimore County. The SRO uh, members have extensive training on when they go into the schools. So uh, um, a lot of the um, issues and problems that they're seeing with some of the SRO programs um, and, um, in Baltimore County, um, you know, we're not we're not um, um, experiencing those. So our delegation is is for for H you know HB five twenty two, um, you know, would look favorably to that one in in, in two forty five and four ninety six, which would essentially get rid of the SRO program. Um, 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 I know Mabe is uh, is opposing that, and our delegation would have to um, um, weigh in on that also. And I just want to throw in just because obviously having been a school administrator, I've experienced it and never was the SRO used as part of my disciplinary team. We were it. Um, and I can say that uh, that what should go with that, if 522 continues um, for us, um, that that also inside of the system, and I can say this with you, Ms. Hen, because you are vice chair of the board, that we need to then make sure that our administrators understand very clearly their roles um, and, and their the relationship, because sometimes the intervention has been because they were called on before, in fact, um, they needed to uh, be that. You know, I've laid on broken up many a fight and been in between and in betwixt and and all of that and sro has to stay out at its administrator business and so i think that even though one is about general assembly business that uh, we need to take a look as as a system uh to make sure that all of our administrators are on the same in the same place with that and are very clear about that. And and I would I would also say, Madam Chair, that um, there's talk in the legislature of, uh, um, about with the bills, you know, allowing the local jurisdiction themselves to determine the SRO program, having, you know, local authority. Um, but um, everyone agrees that, you know, training um, these these, you know, SRO officers is a is a big component of making sure that these programs work well because um, these officers a lot of times are um, mentors to a lot of the children that are that are in the schools. Uh, they become, you know, like a big brother to them and they establish relationships. And that's what the that's what it, it's supposed to be. And um, and so that neck and, 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 and having good training around that is 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 you know is is paramount. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Basemore. Mr. Mahomza, you okay with with um, those resp our responses? Yeah, no, uh, you explained it pretty well. All right, Ms. Hen, you're good. Yes. All righty. Thank you. All right, I'm going to move then. Uh, I'm going to move to House Bill 461, which is about student attendance, um, excused absences for. 
uh, mental health, uh, and it's looking at um, one excused day per quarter. MABE has opposed it. Any questions about that? It was that was very brief because yeah. that's as brief as it was. No. Yeah, yes, Mr. Mahomes. Well, what was their reasoning um, for opposing? Uh, I, because it goes into making um, a LEA decision. Uh, MABE stays away, opposes. Um, policies, two things, curricula policies and things that speak to um, mandating certain specifics such as this uh, to all LEAs. So um, like they're not opposed to the idea, they just want it to be like a local jurisdiction kind of uh yeah, decision. well, there was a lot of feedback. They, you know, that, again, that, that's why because there was a a lot of um, um, feedback about it. And again, yes, they tend even when we, as Mr. Baysmore knows, have a lot of consternation about some things, um, try to stay in a particular lane. So yes, that is it. That is the reason because if it were not, if they sort of wanted to oppose it, but they could see that there was some wiggle room in it, they would say oppose with amendments. Mr. Uh, Baysmore, you want to add anything to that? Yes, ma'am. That's, not, that's kind of an overall uh, general philosophy that they, they have is, is not to um, uh, support legislation that overly prescribes um, um, local jurisdictions and 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 be too prescriptive. They 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 tend to um, want you know the local boards um, to be able to have some um, you know um, room to make make certain local decisions themselves. And if you look at Mabe's, Mr. Mahomes, if you go on Mabe's um, website, you will see their uh, legislative priorities, and you will see um, that about which we're speaking that they. Uh, one of their priorities is that um, LEAs in, in terms of policies uh, are um, autonomous, that they stand on their own and that it should not take legislation um, for any LEA. Okay, Mr. Mahamza? Yes, thank you, ma'am. Oh, oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Baysmore, anything else from Mabe's meeting that you would like me to add or speak to here? I have um, notes. The other, only other note had to do with um, lead levels, water, um, and that has come through before. And um, so. I am done with that May review, Mr. Baysmore, unless you have something else that you would like to add. Mm, no, no, ma'am. Other than that, the lead, the lead discussion on um, Baltimore County, we are already um, ahead of that curve as far as our standards um, for, for, you know, you know um, investigating uh, lead in our water system. So um, that, that legislation that they're proposing, we are already testing um, at those levels. Uh, I think the board brought uh, dealt with this last year. And uh, so just wanted to say that. And Mabe um, addressed it. it. It was a bigger issue last year. This came up last year. And again, uh, we actually were a little ahead of the game um, because Ms. Joes had brought it up and then uh, she went to Annapolis on it. So we were ahead of the game. So last year we actually, as I believe Mr. Baysmore, we were the only system last year that was ahead of the game. So now others have come along. Is that correct? As I recall, that's how that went last year. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm, yes, did I hear a question? All no, right. I, I was just agreeing with you. Oh, uh, okay, thank you. All right, I'm gonna move on then to Mr. Baysmore, um, House Bill 181, which is 
uh, Senate Bill 150, uh, Board of Education Election of Officers. Mr. Bazemore, you want to talk about that? Yes, ma'am. We we um, highlighted some local bills that we thought um, the committee would be interested in and, and maybe wanted to have further discussion on. And it's it, the SRO bills are actually on our agenda and list, but we've already um, um, covered those. So we wanted to bring out that um, H Bill 181, which is a bill uh, on the House side sponsored by Delegate Eric Abersall, and on the Senate side um, sponsored by Delegate Charles Sidnor, is a bill that says that when you have an election of a chair and vice chair at the Baltimore County School Board, that a majority vote. Um, instead of um, um, the way it is now, you have to get to seven votes. But but if you don't get the seven, that a majority vote would elect the chair and the vice chair. So we wanted to make sure that you were aware of that bill and any, any discussion that you needed to have on that. Quick question. Yes, um, Mr. Is the reason that the um, the titles of the, not the title, but like the numbers are different, is that just like a procedural thing or is it like two different bills? It's just um, um, the, 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 the numbers are given on when the bill comes in to, to that particular you know, legislative body. So on the House side, that was bill number 181. And it just so happened that on the Senate side, this bill was uh, 150. Oh, so okay. they, give them, they give them numerical orders uh, in the order that they come in. That's all. And sometimes you have more bills on the House side than, well, than the Senate side, so. OK, thank you. Now, note that as we go through these, uh, we're discussing this for informational purposes only so that we are apprised in the event anyone should ask us questions. You will note that when the bills come up, um, if they pertain to Baltimore County, I send out a notice just for information again so that members can decide whether they want to speak um, as a as one as um, himself or herself on the particular bill. Uh, but we are not taking a position. Um, if anybody sees, however, something that they want to discuss for the notion with the notion of uh, seeing whether the committee is going to take it to the full board, then certainly you may jump in and have that discussion. But generally, I'm just bringing it to you for information only, just so we are informed. We are the body that ought to be well informed. Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. Would Ms. now be an appropriate time when the bill is discussed to recommend that it be brought to the full board for a recommendation? For a, sub, a recommendation to do what? That the board take a position. Okay. On a particular um, so, Yes, certainly, certainly. If you would uh, like to bring 181 House Bill 181, um, now, do you, are you asking, let me make sure I'm clear, you said a recommendation. Are you asking that we bring it to the full board just for their information and uh, discussion? Or are you asking um, ultimately that we take a vote here to see if, as, as a position coming from the committee to the board? I am asking not in regards to 181, but uh, there is a bill on our agenda today that I would like the committee to vote on taking a position in committee to make a recommendation to the full board that they adopt the same position. Okay, so sure. Um, when we get to that bill, okay. then just let me know. Yes, as I said, if there's one that you want to um, address then we can, but other than that, I'm just sharing for information. Okay, yes, yeah, so when we get to it, that is absolutely acceptable. Thank All you. right, any um, questions or comments about House Bill 181? Um, Everyone comfortable, Madam, I wanna make sure you're comfortable with what it means. Ma Madam Chair? Yes, Mr. Bazemore. 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I just wanted to bring to the uh, committee's attention that these two bills are companion bills. Um, as, as, as Mr. Mahomza was saying, one was filed in the House and one was cross filed in the Senate. And, and on the Senate side, Senate Bill 150 um, that was introduced by uh, Senator Sidnor has an amendment to, he added an amendment to Thank his you. bill, Senate yes. Bill 150. Um, um, Delegate Ebersol has not added that amendment to his House bill. Um, so that would have to be reconciled at some point. But here, I wanted the committee to know, and I think you were emailed the amendment um, that Senator Sidnor added on. It, it actually adds on to the original bill that he he's proposing that there be a 13th member um, added to um, the school board to make it an even numbered school board. So that is less likely to get odd number school board. Odd number. Did I say odd? I said, I'm sorry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, odd number um, um, board. And and in, in his uh, proposal, he's saying that the county executive would would appoint that 13th member and that 13th member would go through, um, you know, the same process as the, um, you know, our, our commission uh, on nominations. So I, I thought that that's, you know, significant. And and uh, on that Senate side um, that he added that that amendment on there and for the for the committee to discuss that. Now, any questions about that? Because I did and you saw you just alluded to it, Mr. Basemore, uh, the reconciliation since uh, the House bill does not have uh, that attachment to it. So uh, that will have to be. Now, when exactly would that be reconciled? And what's the process for that? Because either one is going to have to pick it up or the other one is going to have to drop it, I guess, or not. Right. Both both bills will go through their processes on, on the House side and the, and the Senate side. And when you have two bills that are not exactly the same, then, you know, um, both sides would have to come together and do kind of a reconciliation to make to make sure that they line up, um, um, you know, exactly, exactly the same. So they do so, that after each one goes through the normal process? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So then they'd have to go back either way. They have to then go back and redo the process. Not redo the process, but rec hopefully uh, reconcile it. In well, at least, uh, they have to they have to go back and accept, I guess, whatever happens. In other words, if the House bill passes as it is and then the re and, and the Senate bill passes as it is, um, then they do have to reconcile. And don't those same people who said yay to the House bill, if it's to add what the Senate bill had, don't they have to go back and discuss that? And they have well, to vote again. They usually appoint, will, will appoint um, a, couple, a couple of you know senators or delegates um, to be on that reconciliation um, committee. And they would then basically negotiate and see if they can come to a consensus or, on the two bills uh, to make them identical. And then their recommendation comes out and then that that will you know determine uh, the bill moving forward or not because if you can't reconcile them they then they won't then they won't move forward. Gotcha. All right. Thank you, Ms. Han or Mr. Ma or Mr. Mahamza. Yes, uh, I'm just curious. Uh, is the other delegate opposed to um, what the senator is proposing, or is it just because the amendment is pretty uh, new? And he hasn't had the chance to evaluate it. Yeah, I, I spoke uh, to Doug Eversall the other day. I think um, they just haven't had time to really um, sit down and talk about the amendment. And um, okay. so that and that's part. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes that happens, and especially this year, uh, Mr. Mahomza, because everything is, you know, um, so different this year with virtual hearings and 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 COVID protocols. You know, the the normal sequence of things have been kind of out of whack a little bit where we're having um, hearings before the delegation meetings, which uh -huh. you know you should have the delegation meeting before the hearings, but it's all based on time and and how they can schedule things. 
so uh, within all of that this year, we're finding that there's some, you know, little 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 quirks in, in, in the process. So I th I'm, I'm sure that um, Senator um, uh, Sidnor will will be uh, speaking with um, Delegate Ebersol about his amendment, why he put it there, and then and then Delegate Ebersol can can decide whether or not he wants to, uh, you know, embrace that or not. Madam Fine. Chair. Ms. Han, yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. I move that the committee recommend to the full board opposing Senate Bill 150 on the basis of Senator Sidnor's amendment. I have a second. Well, I'll second it, but I want to comment. Okay, well, it has been moved and second. I'm open for discussion. Mr. May I speak to my motion? Oh, yes, please, Ms. Hen, speak to your motion. Thank you, ma'am. I think the last thing we need is a 13th member on the board. I think we have a hard enough time as it is with 12 members in managing the work of the board. And I oppose on the basis of adding a 13th member. I think that the effect, the negative impact on the board far outweighs any benefit and that this, I can't see any positives coming from such a change to our composition. I think the nominating commission was um, put in place for a reason, as well as the election of members, and that by reintroducing an appointed member um, as a third form of um, appointment to the board only muddy, muddies the water even further. So for these reasons, I am opposed to adding a 13th member by county executive appointment, but largely because the impact to the board, the board dynamics, um, the negative impacts far outweigh any positive benefit. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Mr. Mahomsa? Yes, uh, initially I, I didn't really have a position on this, uh, but after attending uh, some committee meetings last week, um, and hearing some of the uh, delegates speak. I think oh, there's a lot of people uh, from that meeting re really favored an odd number board. Um, and this was when I attended the uh, uh, hearing on what, uh, what's the delegate's name? It starts with the N, Novotny, Novotny's uh, bill, where he's talking about um, boards being deadlocked. And although although his rationale, was, I, I didn't agree with it at all. Um, he um, saw that odd numbers um, reduced uh, at times that uh, boards being deadlocked and other board members did echo it. And they were, I, I believe one of them mentioned, why don't they just uh, add another member to um, make it odd? And it, it does make sense um, if you think about it. Um, um, for example, like in the Senate right now, I'm using the federal uh, branch example where you don't really have senators at 50-50. They need somebody at least to break that tie. So, um, and that's why they have the vice president. We don't have a person there to break a tie. The superintendent doesn't really have a vote. So, um, it, I do see where the need for our number board um, is because at times we have a tie, and what a tie is, um, the bill does a motion doesn't move forward, which is not really fair because then, um, because um, how I see a tie is if a bill is. Um, not favored by the whole board. I don't think it should be dead. Um, maybe the, it's a favorable bill, but um, some member did, uh, didn't didn't uh, review it further, so they voted with um, against it. But it can, it might be favorable. So I, I believe an odd number would, might be better. So I, I wouldn't support the motion. Okay, let me uh, repeat Miss Hen's motion. Miss Hen's motion is to take to the full board opposition to the amendment for adding a 13th, um, 13th member. Okay, just wanted to make sure everybody heard um, what the motion is, um, adding a 13th member. All right. Um, Ms. Han, uh, let's do a roll call. Ms. Rosenberg, do a roll call, please.
Ms. Rosenberg. Yeah, I'm, I'm hold on a second. Um, okay. Well, Ms. Hen made the motion, correct? She did. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Mahomza made the second. Made the second. Okay. Yeah. So basically, all I'm saying is that um, I just need you to state your name and your vote, your motion, and your yeah. vote. And your vote. Yes. So, Ms. Hen? Yes. And Mr. Mahoos? No. And I'm going to so, abstain. So, how does. So, Ms. Hen's motion to take to the board. Um, fails because there's a tie. Now, that being said, because both members are interested in it, I'm going to make a motion to take that Senate bill to the board for their information and mm -hmm. discussion. I move to take that bill. What is the bill? I'm sorry, it's SB Senate Bill 150. Bill. Thank you. Yes, 150. Mm, right in my face. 150 uh, to the board for information and discussion. Second. Ms. Hen, Ms. Pasture made the motion. Ms. Hen made the second. Any discussion? And are you including the amendment? Yes, that bill has the um, has the amendment. That's the one that has the amendment. It's a separate document. Yes. Yes, the state bill. That's why we, uh, it's the state bill to which I'm referring that I want to take to the board. All right, it has been moved and seconded. Any discussion? All right, Miss Rosenberg, do a roll call vote, second. please. Miss Pastor. Yes. Ms. Hen? Yes. Mr. Mahamza? Yes. Thank you. All right. Then the motion has um, um, been carried, and so we will take that um, to the board for discuss information and discussion. Now, uh, okay. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to move on. Thank you, and thank you, Ms. Hen, for bringing it up, and thank you both for your discussion of uh, that particular bill with that amendment. Thank you, Ms. Pester. Thank you. Thank you both. All right, let's go now to House Bill 418, uh, Symbols of Hate. This, this, yes, ma'am. This is a bill um, that um, Delegate Michelle Guyton um, has brought forth, and um, and I would um, let um, Joshua Mahomes and Mr. Mahomes speak to this uh, because he's he's been working with uh, Delegate Michelle Guyton on this bill and um, uh, been actively involved uh, in, in this bill. So, Mr. Mahomes, you would you like to give an update? Yes. Um, when I began my term, um, I believe back in July, um, one of the first things uh, I discussed with our, our local uh, legislate, legislators and um, um, some board members is uh, a ban on uh, hate symbols and speech. And um, I, my, one of my first uh, motions was related to this um, topic. Uh, I was happy the superintendent uh, 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 I believe Ms. Howie uh, produced uh, language um, to be added to the handbook uh, where it bans um, certain hate, uh, hate symbols and speech to be displayed. But uh, Delegate Guyton uh, was very proactive uh, with this matter. He, I believe she brought this to, atten to the attention of the board prior to me even being on the board. And she has worked um, ever since uh, to produce a, a bill on the state level where it bans these hate symbols uh, in, in and near uh, school premises 
currencies and um it received uh a lot of support i don't even i don't know if anybody even spoke against it so it's a popular bill um and i i, th I think we should i don't know about other board members opinion but i think it's one that this board would support thank you mr mahamza and i would i would just add that um Ms. Uh, Chairwoman Cheryl Pasteur um, gave gave that position for 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 ba you know for Baltimore County, and noted that uh, Mr. Mahomes at May. That, at, at May, I'm sorry, at May, and and also noted that you as a board member, student board member, was you know actively involved with that. So yes, we had already spoken to it, and and it is wonderful when we have these things. So I thank you. Um, when we are able to lead the way for MABE on these kinds of issues. Ms. Han, do you have anything you want to add to, to this discussion on this bill? Thank you. All righty, thank you. Again, thank you, Mr. Mahamsa, for your work. All right, House Bill uh, 468, School Board Nominating Commission. Mr. Baysmore. Vacancy procedures. Yes, ma'am, uh, Madam Chair. This bill is sponsored by um, Delegate Kathy Forbes, and it's it's a bill that she's putting forth um, that 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 will try, that will rectify um, when you're when you're replacing someone um, a vacancy on the board. Um, what happened when you know the unfortunate um, death of a, a board member? Uh, we had a vacancy that needed to be filled. what we learned um, through that process was that the nominating commission had to have meetings different meetings all around the county and and so they had to set that up in the northwest and then in the central and then in the on the east side and that took a lot of time and as we know um, um, it, it you know prolonged that vacancy um, just, you know, sitting there because they had to go through all these procedures. So so what Delegate um, Forbes is saying in her bill is that when there's one vacancy like the one we experienced, that we can have a a, a virtual a, a meeting that streamed virtually one meeting and open to the public for everybody uh, to attend and thus cutting down the timeline that it takes to fill a vacancy because no one wants that you know, vacancy to be there two or three months and, and the board business is being conducted. So um, that that's the intention of this bill um, is targeted to one vacancy and giving the um, commission the ability to hold, you know, uh, a, a countywide virtual meeting uh, streamlined so that everyone can 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 weigh in on it and that is it's public facing. So it's open and transparent as well. Thank you, Mr. Basemore. Any discussion? All righty, thank you. All right, let's move to House Bill 629, uh, student member voting. Mr. Baysmore. Yes, ma'am. This bill is what uh, Mr. Mahamza alluded to. Delegate Novotny um, proposed this, this bill. Um, it's a statewide bill, but we thought it would be, you know, that this board should be aware of this. Um, at, at the hearing of this bill, there was a lot of questions about um inhibiting what the bill does is is if you have a, a tie vote in anything on a board they're saying well, what he's saying is that the student board member cannot cast the deciding vote on any any matter um where there's a tie and so there was a lot of debate on that and i think um mr mohamza was um, involved with this one too where um, the questions from the chair and, and a lot of the senior members was if, if a person has the right to vote, you know, you, you, you then don't limit their vote because it, it, it may sway um, um, a particular vote. So, um, you know, there was there was a lot of those type of questions which kind of, you know, get, let you see kind of how the, the committee is, is leaning towards this type of bill. But uh, Mr. Mahamza, did you want to weigh in? Because I, I know that you were in, in, involved with this one as well. Yes, um, although I didn't uh, had have the opportunity uh, to testify uh, at the hearing, I was tuned in and I, beyond the scenes, I was talking to fellow SMOBs um, and other uh, uh, 
state leaders and uh, this bill is not favorable at all and just hearing uh, the delegate who pr uh, proposed this you can just see how um, this bill not only was it rushed I don't even think um, I think what it was in response to was what was occurring in Heifer County his home district where they were deadlocked with um, the reopening of schools and I'll, and what we said uh, as mobs initially is we're not going to get into this political argument um, whether we're for or, or against reopening schools uh, what this delegate is doing is saying um, since the student board member was a part of that group uh, that was deadlocked and since they were their student um, their vote uh, doesn't matter as much because um, they're the student so we're going to uh, limit it and not allow him to he or she to vote during a tiebreaker which makes absolutely no sense um, in his testimony he said he respects the vote of the student board member um, but doesn't want it to be deadlocked but I don't know about other board members but if your vote is limited and because it's because of a tie it does your vote really matter uh, I mean it, it makes absolutely no sense and uh, we had legal scholars we had um, the uh, legislatures legislators we had uh, teachers um, go uh, speak against this bill uh, and I was happy to, uh, and I'm happy to mention that uh, the first ever smob in the state of Maryland um, I believe is from Anne Arundel County and is now uh, uh, a, de a prominent professor at Georgetown University um, I believe he um, uh, he heads the uh, government and uh, uh, international law department at uh, at that university spoke at the hearing uh, uh, student leaders and uh, other uh, adults signed an amicus brief against the lawsuit also in happening in Montgomery County which uh, uh, the lawsuit is different to uh, to what this um, bill says the lawsuit is basically doing the same thing uh, limiting I, I, if I'm not mistaken I think the lawsuit is it's saying they can't vote in a tie or is it saying they can't vote at all I think it says that they can't vote at all right in the in a tie if they're the deciding vote on any issue that they wouldn't be able to vote at that point but they could vote on other things so it's is that the, is that the sorry is that the lawsuit or the bill oh that's the bill i'm sorry yeah, yeah, yeah. oh yeah i'm sorry yeah i think the lawsuit if i'm not mistaken says student board members shouldn't vote and i think um i might be wrong on that um i have to reread it it's been a while but uh that was uh, there's another a lawsuit happening in, uh, in Howard County and so uh, they recently uh, submitted an amicus brief on that. Thank you Mr. Mahomsa. thank you for your work and your information. Thank you Mr. Basemore as well. All right and we're going to go to House Bill 751 oversight by the Baltimore County Office of the Inspector General. Mr. Baysmore. Yes, ma'am. This bill um, is being brought forth by Delegate Eric Ebersol on the House side, thus HB 751 is the number, and on the Senate side, it's being brought forth by Senator um, uh, Kathy Klausmeyer, and that the number of that bill is SB 655. Um, this bill actually will expand the Baltimore County Inspector General um duties uh where right now the baltimore county government inspector general can investigate investigate fraud waste and abuse in baltimore county government but doesn't have the statutory um ability to investigate baltimore county public schools so this bill in effect would expand the baltimore county inspector general's um duties and have them actually um have, have the you know stat statutory right to inspect fraud waste and abuse in Baltimore County public schools. Okay, any questions? Yes, oh, Madam Chair. Yes, Ms. Han. Thank you. I move that the committee take House Bill 751 to the full board for discussion with a recommendation to support. Uh, can I get a second please? Okay. Hearing no second, um, that motion fails. Um, 
I move to take House Bill 751 to the full board for discussion. Do I have a second? Hearing no second, that also fails. Um, I, 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 I won't, um, I'll, we'll, we'll, we'll just move uh, to that. I will move on. Um, I will say it is one that um, I'm sure we all have some interest in on different levels and that there's also some other ones that are uh, similar. Mr. Baysmore, in your capacity, uh, you work with um, the superintendent and maybe board officers in, in discussions of the bills that we examine? Yes, ma'am. Okay, that includes board officers as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay, Ms. Han and um, Mr. Mahunza, uh, since both motions fail, um, I would like us to leave uh, Bill um, uh, 751 in the hands of Mr. Baysmore as he described in terms of his duties and his relationship with the superintendent and board officers since yeah. both motions failed. Um, can I comment, sir? Sure. Yeah, um, like the reason I didn't second is because I personally haven't, um, I, I just found out about, I believe, uh, Mr. Basemore uh, told me about the bill, I believe a couple, like a week or so ago. Uh, I haven't personally um, been able to research it and what it does. And so it's not like I'm voting against the bill or providing a personal opinion. So I just wanted that um, to be included in the minutes. Thank you. And yeah. again, pointing out uh, that because there are uh, what do I want to say? variations, if you will, uh, and Ms. Hen, you are vice chair. Um, I would appreciate it because this is something that has some far reaching um, considerations. I, I'm asking in light of Mr. Baysmore's stipulation about his position and what he does with leadership and the superintendent that we might want to start there because you certainly have um, any number of options for is this to be discussed either by the, uh, the board um, as a whole or bringing it back to the committee. Well, Madam Chair, I think that the committee could more easily facilitate bringing this to the full board for discussion, which is why I made my motion. And I am disappointed that the committee did not support my motion to allow the full board to discuss this since you did acknowledge that there is interest in this um, subject. There's interest with us, but just as Mr. Mahomza just indicated, he is just getting into this one because they didn't come out at the same time and there are there are different levels we need we, I, I i would expect that as a committee we would be the best verse versed in any discussion that comes to the board um right alongside of officers and the superintendent so rather than trying to catch anybody up on whatever, certainly it can become um, an agenda item, if you would, um, with and where there's the request to ask people to take a look at it to make sure that everybody is well apprised so there is a discussion. And then if there is a motion on the floor to accept a, or to have a position, everyone is well versed so it doesn't keep it's not kicked down the road, if you will. So uh, that's where I am. I'm not to closing the door, just saying give Mr. Bays more an opportunity to do his job with the superintendent and the chair and the vice chair. And Mr. Bays give me give me a time. Can you give us a time 
line where you think we are? Well, the, or this where bill, they are. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's a local bill, so it would have to be taken up in the lo local committees. Right. Um, in, in the House and the Senate side. And and also, I, I believe, um, Madam Chair, you, you sent this bill to the. To, to the board, I, I believe, if, if I I'm did. not mistaken, we sent this a couple of weeks ago and, um, you know, so that they could be aware of any discussion. So um, I'm, I'm here and available if, if, if um, um, anybody wants to talk, you know, about this bill and and where it's where it's going and 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 um, you know how they can how they can get involved either either individually or as, or, or as a group. Um, you know, sending you know you can send letters into to uh, support or not support um, while you're working through um, the whole board having having a position. So um, that that's also um, available. I just wanted to let Miss uh, uh, Vice Chair Hen, Hen know that as well. Um, so. And I and I did indeed, and um, with only a couple of exceptions, we we really had no feedback. Everyone had that opportunity to um, to process it. I and, and I can't. And because we don't, uh, it was for information only and not for discussion. Um, I have no idea, but certainly. And I not had the conversation with leadership. So again, I am proposing that Mr. Baysmore pick it up so that it, it it's not dropped, but Mr. Baysmore pick it up and do what he has asserted that he does with bills, particularly of this nature and because it's local, um, and then let leadership make its decision about uh, it come, it's either it, about it coming to the agenda from leadership and from the superintendent. So it didn't take, but it gives you, Mr. Mahomes, the time. Um, uh, it didn't get a second on either. So uh, that being said, uh, let's move to House Bill 753, Student Organized Peaceful Demonstrations. Mr. Baysmore. Yes, this is a, a local bill as well from Delegate Eric Ebersol that is basically um, because, you know, there's been a lot of demonstrations and things happening last year, you know, this last past year um, that um, if students are, um, you know, having peaceful demonstrations that, you know, people you can't that can't be impeded or, or, or stopped or, or, or the student, you know, be disciplined for a peaceful demonstration. Mm -hmm. Do I have any uh, thoughts, comments on Mr. Baysmore's comments? Thank you, Mr. Baysmore. Yes. Um, Mr. Mahamsa. Yeah. Um, how is this different from like um, the Supreme Court ruling Tinker v. Des Moines? I, I thought this, um, and this is just for my own uh, knowledge, I thought those rights were already granted to students. I believe they are, Mr. Mahamza, and so um, that's that's a good question. Um, and you know, the sponsor of the bill would would have to answer that one. The delegate, delegate episode. Okay. How he sees this bill, how he sees this bill um, fitting in, you know, fitting in with that. So. Yeah, and uh, I talked to some of the students because I know this was a student led bill, and I just wanted to that fact to be known. Um, so I didn't get a chance to uh, really talk to them about it, but um, but I know it's a great bill. It's a great idea. And I, I, I just I was thinking while I was reading and getting prepared for this meeting that I, I, I thought we already had these rights already um, in law. Uh, so um, I'm, ha I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to talk to those students because I know they mentioned that they helped write it uh, with the delegate and the delegate has been very supportive. Um, so I just look forward for more uh, explanation on that. OK, and I can follow up with them as well, um, because typically if th th there may be a gap somewhere and typically when you see bills like this uh, piggybacking on existing law, sometimes they they see maybe a, a gap in there somewhere. Um, yeah. but I don't want to get out, get out in front of him so I can I can circle around and speak with him as well. And and uh, you can speak to the students and, you know, 
get you an answer for that. Yeah. And I would just say, and I have to admit, I don't recall it off the top of my head, um, uh, but you are correct in terms of law. But sometimes they, and generally, um, they will put a notation in the bill so you can see it, what it is that is being changed or makes the difference or where the, they saw the issue. So it might be in that boat, uh, Mr. Baysmore. I know you know that because we just had an issue on another one where a person thought the bill was really overturning something. And when I went back to look at it for the person, the only thing the person did was change letters, just uh, took out one piece and then that was ambiguous and and just um, reformatted it. But you had to read, which was in very small letters, um, how to read it so you could see what had been added and what had been removed. And I, right. I, and I looked at it, I, I did not look at it in that vein. I, I was left quizzical about it. Right. Uh, but I, I thank you for good. going back and talking to um, Delegate Ebersol about it. Okay. All righty, let's take. Madam Chair, yes, has, yes, Ms. Head, I'm sorry. That's okay. Has MAME taken a position on this bill? Um, I'll try to see if I have it. Let me see. Which which one? Is this 753? This is, yes, sir. Yes. Uh-huh. If it's a local bill, typically they. No, which, wait a minute. This, this is the demonstrations. I didn't think that's not a local bill, is it? Correct. It's not. No. And I don't. Wait a minute. Let me go back. Because when did it come out, Mr. Baysmore? Because it didn't come up um, at the last one. But I can go back and see in my other notes. It's January 29th. Right. Well, then it should have come up on our. It should have come up on the last one. I don't have it on my list. As, as I don't. It didn't. No. As may have taken a position, but uh, I can I can follow up, um, Madam Vice Chair. I can follow up on and get you that information on HB seven five three to see if Mabe is taking a position on that. I'm going to try to just locate it, go back and look at it before we get out of the meeting. But I, I, I list all of them and it's not on my list. Yeah, it's not on mine either. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I don't know if I have the up to date list though. That's the thing. Well, I took, I do the list as, as we go through them from the agenda. So, that's how I know that we did not cover it, but I'm going to look back because I keep notes on all of the bills as they come through and to see what if met from made as well and see if they did. I'll try to do that while we're in open um, if I'm able. Thank you. My, my only concern with this is the specificity and I can see it running counter to board policies. And I know Maine um, protects the or empowers local boards to create our own policies. And I can see some of the specificity running into um, issues with local board policy. That's and all. I would agree. And my suspicion is that's not why it was on the list because it is so clearly um, one that would be germane to each LEA. Um, right. Yeah, and that is what you just stated is my suspicion as to why it is not in fact on here. But I will try to look before we're done anyway. And Mr. Baysmore certainly has mm -hmm. it all on lockdown. So if you can do it faster than I can, that would be great. All righty, I am at, we, okay. Um, let me go back up here. I came down too far, I'm afraid. Uh, four, six. All right. Um, how, uh, state 
uh, bill 468. I hope I didn't miss one because I'm sort of out of whack here. 822. Madam Chair, 822. Oh, I did. I did. I missed House Bill 822. Thank you, Ms. Hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Baltimore County Board of Education members, publication of contact. Mr. Baysmore. Yes, ma'am. This was a bill that was introduced last year by Delegate um, Grammer. And I think when the session ended, um, early, you know, last year due to due to COVID, it didn't go all the way through. So um, this particular issue we rectified last year. Um, at that time, working with um, board chair Kathy uh, Kathy Clausey, Kathleen Clausey, um, we were able to we were able to get all of the um, contact information up on the website um, that the public would need. So this is actually done. But I think he's just going through to get since it didn't it didn't uh, uh, go through the whole process last year. But we already have all of our information already, you know, public facing contact information. So. Thank you. Questions? Yes, Madam Chair. Yes, Ms. Han. Thank you, um, Mr. Basemore. I had conversations with Delegate Grammer about this bill um, mm -hmm. when he was drafting it and I'm not sure that the information we provided met his requirements in what he was looking for um, in terms of his constituents had requested a direct phone number to board members. And I shared my concerns that um, not being full time employees of the school system, that would be logistically difficult to provide, um, that we could provide um, our, you know, assistance phone number or board office phone number, things of that sort, but we were just, just discussing the particulars. And so I'm not sure that we have published, um, if we're following the letter of the law here, um, what he's he's asking for. And he was in agreement with me that what we had published did not meet these requirements. So I think there is some, um, so a gap that we have not met the requirements if if this were to to pass. So okay. I just wanted to bring that to your attention and if mm -hmm. you could possibly get clarification. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, excellent. I, I'll so get clarification, clarification on that because we thought we had everything. We got the email addresses up. We have um, if someone fo you know calls in, they can get the the main number and then when you when you call in, it also gives you the option of of of, of your message going directly to um, a, a specific board member, and then Tracy answers all of those and keeps track of, of all of those. And oh. uh, so, but I'll I'll see I'll see if there's something else that he he wanted. We 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 I know last year there was discussion about um, you know cell phone numbers and and that sort of thing, but um, we. We felt that, you know, the system that we had up with the email address and the phone number to, um, to Tracy and um, and the option for people if they wanted it just to go to a specific board member, they could just hit it, you know, hit the button and go right okay. to the specific board member. So that's great. And it, if that meets, you know, the requirements, awesome. That that's right. new information right. to me. Perfect. Wait, Mr. Bazemore. Mr. Mahomes. Yeah, I'm I'm reading the bill right now um i see a mailing address is that saying and phone number to board members is that so mailing addresses for board members and phone numbers um it would be to um to tracy where they not not to your home you wouldn't be addressed to your home it would be to tracy if they wanted to mail something in and then she would get that to the to, to the board member it's a, and I remember it's a, that from last year, um, and I'm I'm pretty sure and Miss Hen or Mr. Mahomes or Mr. Baysmore, you can correct me on this, that what because he gave an example when it came out before, and it was personal information, um, with the rationale being that um, constituents have said that when it has gone to Tracy or to Miss Gover that um, there's been 
no response. And so the feeling was maybe it didn't get there. Now I've had it happen and I've gotten it immediately and responded immediately. But I'm thinking, and, and in fact, if I'm not mistaken, Ms. Hen, you might know better than I do. He used himself as an example and his was more personal information. So yep. um, I, I really agree with Ms. Hen that we would like to have Mr. Baysmore uh, tune in and find out exactly um, about what he is speaking. Mr. Mahomza. Yeah, and I'm just reading the language right now uh, and saying um, the Baltimore County Public School shall publish prominently on the website the contact information for each uh, member of the Baltimore County Board of Education, including an email address, a mail, a mailing address, and a direct uh, telephone number that is provided by the Baltimore County Public Schools. So just looking at that language, it's saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, each member is not like the address of Greenwood, it's, it's going to be each of us's address. Am I reading it right? See, when you just read it, it sounded to me like what we're already doing. So without um, trying to guess what it is, let's go back to just what Ms. Hen asked Mr. Baysmore to do. Let him zoom in um, and find out exactly what yeah. is meant by that because what you just read to me and you and I are not hearing the same thing. I heard more of what we're doing versus what I researched last year and got as an answer. So we do want that. So may, can we move on? I'm trying to watch time here. Um, so Mr. Baysmore, will you take Ms. Hen's request please and get mm -hmm. some details on that for us? It, it is done. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. And every time we do this, I lose my spot. OK, um, um, uh, Senate Bill 468, Baltimore County Board of Education Annual Budget <coughs> Conditions on Expenditures. Mr. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma this is Senate Bill 468 <coughs> sponsored by uh, Senator Chris West. Essentially, the bill is saying that um, is giving the authority of to the county executive and the county Baltimore County Council to withhold funding to Baltimore County Public Schools if Baltimore County Public Schools does not meet certain conditions um, that the county executive and the county council are, are specifying. So um, it's it's expanding the authority of the county executive and the county council. Um, right now, the county council, when you send over your budget, the county council can um, reduce the budget, but it can't add to it. And the county executive, you know, has control of the budget. He can he can fund um, and 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 uh, different programs and things as, as it stands now. But 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 what this bill would do is give them an added. Um, authority to actually hold funding back from the school system if certain uh, conditions aren't aren't met. Thank you. Questions? Comments? Madam Chair? Yes, Ms. Hamm. Thank you. I move that the committee take Senate Bill 468 to the full board with the recommendation to support. Um, thank you, Ms. Hen. Is there a second? Hearing no second, that motion failed. Madam Chair, I move to that the committee take Senate Bill 468 to the full board for discussion. Is there a second? Hearing none, that motion failed. I'm going to move to House Bill 496. Primary and secondary education, mental health services, counselors, not cops. We looked at 496, House Bill, House Bill 522, uh, Senate Bill. 
Yes, Ms. Ham. I have a motion for um, House Bill 496. I move. Thank you. I move that the committee um, take House Bill 496 to the full board with a recommendation to oppose. Do I have a second? Hearing no second, the motion fails. Madam Chair, I move that the committee yes. take 496 to the full board for discussion. Uh, do I have a second? Uh, hearing none, that motion fails. House Bill 522, we looked at. Any further discussion about school resource officers? Senate Bill 245, any further discussion on school resource officers, requirements and prohibitions? House Bill 1197, Baltimore County Board of Education, Legal Counsel and Chief Budget Analyst, Mr. Baysmore. Yes, ma'am, this bill is by Delegate uh, Boatler that is um, authorizing um, for the Baltimore County School Board to have, uh, you know, legal counsel and a chief budget analyst to help with the uh, budget budget negotiation. I think as it stands now, it's um, there's um, contractual workers that that do it. I'm not 100% certain, but um, this bill would actually give the school board, a, you know, legal their legal counsel and a chief budget analyst. So obviously, this was definitely something that I, I know the school board would be interested in? Um, I'm going to ask first um, because I'm feeling like it's an appropriate question. Ms. Han, I'm going to call on you. Do you have anything that any information that you can add to this? Um, because I admit I'm yes. not clear. Thank you, Madam Chair. This requires. And thank you for answering because <laughs> no, I put you on the spot. Thank you. Um, I am familiar with this bill um, that Delega Delegate Boatler has submitted. It provides for the board two, re two important resources. One is legal counsel, which we currently do not have the legal authority to hire. It provides us with the legal authority to hire as well as the funding legislated to acquire legal counsel, as well as a chief budget analyst requiring um, for the funding to for that resource. So it provides for both of those resources. Okay. And I have a motion when appropriate, if you will. All right, Mr. Go ahead, make your motion, Miss 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 Han. Thank you. Unless Mr. Mahamza had questions or comments first. Well, it, it, first on, okay, okay. Do you just have general convers uh, questions, Mr. Mahamza, that you want to make prior to any motion? And then I want to entertain your questions first. No, ma'am. All right. Thank you, Miss Hen. You have a motion. Thank you. Um, I move that the committee take House Bill 1197 to the full board with a recommendation to support. Do I have a second? Hearing none, it fails. I'm going to ask, um, I'm not going to put it in the form of a motion, but um, this is relatively um, complex on some different levels. Um, I'm going to ask, um, and Ms. Hen, I know that you, you have some background on this, but with Mr. Baysmore, um, I, 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 I want to hear, is there more Mr. Baysmore you can get to us so that um, then if leadership decides to put it on, on agenda, we all have some more in-depth information. Yes, this bill just um, and Miss Rosen, Miss Rosenberg, I think is still still there. This bill was just, just in, introduced. 
that believe and we've been monitoring every day to get the yeah. actual uh, language. Mr. Rosenberg, have we been able to get the? Um, we have. We have the bill. We have it. Has it been the has actual it, bill, which is not attached to the agenda, but it came in yesterday. It came in yesterday. Okay, I knew it was a late bill, so okay. if we can get that to the to the committee and. Um, Ms. Pastor can get that to the board members. That'll be excellent. And it's also a bill that was introduced last year. Same bill. It's the same bill, right? I was going to add that. It was, yeah. yeah. And I. What well, it was? It were these two pieces connected? I don't remember legal counsel and the chief, but I just remember the chief budget analyst piece. It was both part of the same. Both were on the bill. I I really. Okay, I, I'm going to ask that um, uh, Mr. Baysmore get us this information, and and then I will see that the um, board gets the bill, and um, then we can move on when we have a board meeting. Um, as such, I, 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 I promise, I, I absolutely promise that as soon as um, I look in it, Mr. Mahomza can look at it and um, I will send it out to the full board for their information, Ms. Ham, and then we can move sure. forward I would without like to coming from the committee. Madam Chair, I would like to move that the committee um, forward this um, okay. or give, send this bill to the full board for consideration. House Bill 1197. They received it last session as House Bill 1373. So it is okay. something they are familiar with and have received. And that is so we have, even though I don't remember the first part, but I do remember the chief budget analyst. Um, can I get a second? I'm going to second um, this. Um, but it has to get out. I, I, I just for our information, um, I'm going to second it. Uh, I'm going to, and, and let me, no, I'll ask you, Ms. Hen, to speak to your motion and then I'm going to speak to why my, my second of it for discussion. Go ahead. Ms. Thank Hen. you. These are two resources that we've discussed at length as a board um, needing one being legal counsel. The current law um, is, is problematic in that we don't have the legal authority to hire our own counsel. It's been discussed um, at length. Our current board council has advised us, has advised the board officers to have that law changed. This provides for that. We've discussed the need for resources since I've been on the board to help us with the budget. With a $2 billion plus budget, we need all the help we can get. And this bill provides those two very critical resources to help us be more effective doing our jobs. So this is a critical um, piece of legislation for us, not only in providing the resources, but in correcting a problem with the law with regards to being able to hire our own counsel. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Han. Uh, and I will speak to it and then I'll turn it to you, Mr. Mahomza, if you have any thoughts about this. Um, I am particularly interested in understanding the, the part on legal counsel, the legal counsel and chief budget analyst. I, at this point, um, really need some more information about um, the conflagration of these, these, these two. I really am not seeing at this point, as I look at the wording, how they uh, come together. So, I admit I gave a second just so I could because I wanted us to have discussion on that. But it just seems to me that as you just pointed out, Ms. Hen, both of these are so important. I really want to do a deep dive 
into both of them. And I would imagine others would as well. Mr. Mahomza, do you have any thoughts on this? Yeah. Yes, um, I wasn't aware of, of this law, and I, I don't know if the board has discussed this before, so I didn't um, want to second something that I, I didn't know about and send it to the board if I'm ever asked the question. So um, that's why. So I, I, it's not like I'm against it. I just uh, more information and I, I should probably like re, uh, research it more. And just as a reminder that the second only opens it up for discussion. It doesn't hold anyone um, in a spot, um, but thank you. I think um, thank you. So, uh, Ms. Rosenberg, can you do a roll call, please? Wait, are we? Sorry. Uh, are yeah. we still going to get? Um, Mr. Mahamza. Yeah, sorry. Are we still going to get that information that you asked for, Ms. Bester? Yes, I'm going to see that the bill is going to come out. That comes out to everyone. Okay. Yes. Miss right. mm. Rosenberg. Yeah, right. The actual bill I just sent to. Thank you. All right, we still need to roll call because we can't read it and digest it right now. Miss Hen. Yes. Mr. Mahamza. Yes. Ms. Pastor? No. All right, it passes. The motion passes. Okay. Um, we will read it. I will see um, that immediately the full board gets it and it will then be left up to superintendent and leadership in terms of agenda planning when we will take a look at it. Thank you, Ms. Hen. Thank you, Mr. Mahonza. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All righty, um, uh, Senate Bill 126, House Bill 237, State Department of Education, Early Literacy and Dyslexia Practices Guidance and Assistance. Mr. Baysmore. Mr. Baysmore. Okay. Well, he's, he's muted. I'm muted. Oh, unmute, please. <laughs> I couldn't see you because I had the agenda over your face. Unmute. It, it, it had to happen. It was me this time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Um, uh, yeah, this this bill, um, uh, Mr. Mahomza had brought to our attention and wanted wanted us to add it on, and we were able to get this bill added on. Um, it's it's um, being brought forth by Delegate Ebersol. And in, it's pertaining to um, early literacy, early literacy and dyslexia, and um, the practice, you know, with the guidance, uh, a, a book in in outlining the um, the best practices of of uh, early, you know, that early literacy and dyslexia, and and it requires that a handbook is is created. So uh, we were able to get this on, uh, Mr. Mahamza, and I know you wanted to speak to this, so uh, the floor is yours. Yes, um, th uh, this uh, issue uh, was brought to my attention by a constituent who has been very um, active uh, with advocating uh, uh, for uh, early uh, literacy and dyslexia practices. And um, I think it's great uh, because a lot of our students have had challenges reading personally. I also, um, although it was not like dyslexia, uh, but um, I also did have challenges reading as an early age and didn't have as much resources um, in order to uh, catch up as my fellow uh, catch up to my fellow peers. So it took time, a lot of uh, learning and um, my mother's patience <laughs> to uh, um, mm -hmm. really assist me with reading. But as, I, as we're talking about equity and we're um, in closing the gaps, I think it's really important um, um, to provide resources and um, allow uh, us to have uh, these stakeholder groups and having uh, this handbook produced. And um, I think it's going to receive a lot of support. And so I hope we can also um, support it. So I, if you don't mind, Madam Chair, may I make a motion um, that we make a rec um, remove this um, 
bill to the full board uh, for a favorable uh, recommendation. Second. Okay, Ms. Um, Rosenberg, would you do a roll call, please? Oh, I'm sorry. No, before you do that, let me comment on this bill. Um, a similar one had been out. I was trying to find it so I could read Mabe's notes um, because Mabe um, actually recommend, uh, uh, recommend uh, approved it with amendments. And this one is some overlap from the one, there were things that were taken out last time and this one sort of put some of the things back in. Um, I, dyslexia, dysgraphia, and dyscalculia are um, in my heart. They, uh, they, they sit at the center of my reading being. Uh, and in fact, we're going to spend one of the curriculum meetings talking about them because um, they are, they are, we do not, we do not diagnose them in and of themselves. We put children through a myriad of obstacles before we then come back and say, oh, it must be or it might be, which means we have spent an inordinate amount of time um, losing ground with helping them. And there are both state and federal guidelines about resources that are to go um, to children uh, for any one of the three. And I happen to know a person whose child has all three, which is an anomaly, but she has all three. Um, and she had to go through a battle to uh, get all of the services, the collection of services. So I'm saying all of this to say that um, the motion is on the floor and it's second and it's great. I just want us to all make sure that when we speak to these three, the three D's as I call them, that they are not conflated with um, just some of the things that keep children from reading, some of the um, social and economic and other things that keep children from reading, that this is a deep dive. It's very serious and we need to, if, if it if it passes, that it must be articulated in terms of our changing our educational and mental paradigm about these three. I just needed to put that mm -hmm. out because if it's coming from, if it passes and it comes from the committee, I want us to be the last bastions in terms of support for it if it passes. So I'm giving folks homework if it in fact passes. So now, Ms. Rosenberg, if you <laughs> say the vote. <laughs> so can we go back to the motion, if you don't yes. mind? I will state it uh, that um, uh, the bill. Senate House Bill 0126, House Bill 37. Three, yes, that they are brought to the full board um, for um, discussion and, and make, did you have discussion in it, Mr. Mahamza, and passage? Uh, you can uh, amend it for uh, discussion and a favorable Thank you so uh, much. Recommendation. Thank you so much. Discussion right. and recommendation. recommendation to accept. Okay, Ms. Hen. Yes. Mr. Mahamza? Yes. And Ms. Pastor. Yes. yes. Don't forget the homework committee. You don't like homework, but I just can, gave you homework. Can you email it to us? <laughs> what do you want me to give you? The three Ds for dummies like but, but yes, I will. I absolutely, without equivocation, I'm going to send you talking points with love. <laughs> All Ms. Hen has to do is make sure it's on the agenda. All righty. So now uh, we have 
come to the end of our bills and now we're down to announcements. I'm going to, uh, I, before we get to announcements, um, I'm going to, I'm going to make this a motion. You know, I, 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 I really think we can do this by consensus. It's three of us with grief, but I'm going to make it a motion. I move with the depth and consideration of the work this committee does that we end our meetings at 530 instead of five o'clock I and I okay yes that's my motion second thank you Miss Hen I'd like to speak to it an hour was enough and is enough if we just sort of are talking heads this committee has evolved into something that is very meaningful we delve we consider we man massage how we approach um, different bills from what angles we present them to the full board. They speak to how we exist and grow as a system. And I think we should grow up and be like the other committees and have an hour and a half. <laughs> Anyone else want to discuss the Government and Legislative Relations Committee? And that motion. Ms. Rosenberg, thank you. Ms. Rosenberg, will you do a roll did, call? Did we have a second? We Ms. Hand second the motion. Thank you. Yes. Roll call. Let's start with Ms. Hand. Yes. Mr. Mahamsa. Yes. And Ms. Pastor. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, GL team. You're kind of wonderful, appreciate that. All righty, announcements. Next Legislative and Government Relations Committee meeting is Thursday, March 11th at 4 p.m. Anyone have anything you wanna say as we close for the good of the order? And I thank you. And even though we just voted to go until 530, we're already over time, but we <laughs> have a lot on our plates today. I want to thank each of you. Ms. Rosenberg, thank you so much for being thorough. Mr. Baysmore, I thank you profusely for the work you do as our government liaison and being able to fill us in. Ms. Hen and Mr. Mahumza, Macum I want to thank you for your work on this committee. Um, I'd like a motion to uh, adjourn, please. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Pester. Thank you, Ms. Hen. May I get a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Mahumza. We are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Have a, have a great you. evening and be safe. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Corn.